So the best half forwards in Gaelic football, probably one of the most thankless jobs because you're usually uh, beavering up and down the line and you have to get through an awful lot of work and you're probably expected to get on the score sheet at the end. Where do you think we, where do you think we start off here if we're talking about the best half forwards in the game? Well, first of all, isn't it called the graveyard shift? Because you are just up and down like a whore's knickers, if we can use that term. Uh, one of the first lads that has come to mind is a guy who wasn't far off football of the year last year, didn't end up even getting an all-star, um, Stephen O'Brien. Just that pace, the ability to carry the ball, run at you, change direction. He has scores in him. He's in the prime of his career. I think he'd have to be, he'd definitely have to be up there. But I have to say, Rory Dean has really impressed me in the last last couple of years, really. His ball carrying ability, the size of him, can hold lads off. He's, he's after adding a few scores as well. So those two lads, if we can start off with Munster, they definitely jump out at me. Yeah, Rory Dean's a brilliant playmaker as well, isn't he? he? He's kind of the one that makes things tick for Mark Collins and Brian Hurley and these sort of boys. I think he's very good. I think Stephen O'Brien is the best one, the best man you'll ever see at putting a defender on the back foot. He's so good at putting a defender on the back foot. I always think it's gas. It was the same with David Moore heading into 2015 All Ireland. He's front runner for footballer of the year, and then he doesn't get an All Star. And the same thing happened with O'Brien, which is mad. Everyone, the whole conversation last year, last year was Stephen O'Brien is in footballer of the year form, and then he doesn't get an All Star, which is a bit, which is a bit crazy. But it was like, it's funny. One of the lads that's going to come into the conversation. Uh, is an all-star centre back, <laughs> and that's and that's and that's Brian Howard. Yeah, I mean, obviously that that was just completely ridiculous putting him in the back line, and obviously there's the jiggery pokery to try and get the, enough players in the in the team from certain counties, and the optics of how would it look if we didn't have enough Dublin lads in there or enough Kerry lads in there, which obviously works against the whole ethos of who was the best player that year. But I think as a wing forward, Brian Howard has really kind of stepped up in the last year or so. And some people could say, fair enough, he, pl- he played midfield. We've seen, seen him wear number nine a couple of times, going up for the throw-in with uh, Brian Fenton in the last year or so. But I think as a wing forward, he's just, he's been so good covering, covering ground, getting his hand on the ball. But the, actually that step, do you know when he gets the ball and he's sort of the old shake and bake and he's gone? Really, really good player. And to be fair, in more of an understated way, Niall Scully has really, really fitted in there nicely. He seems a real system player. Like, he just fits into exactly what they're doing. But I actually love the way he's, like, he'll get on the end of a move, running inside the 45 and slalom in and out, out of the defence. I think he's very, very good at that. But if you were talking about, you were talking about the graveyard shift and it's basically a tankless job, it's probably the first, the first one, when I think about half forwards like that, that changed the role probably be Paul Galvin I'd say who played that role where it was you know dirty ball getting down on ball uh, filtering back into the defence he would have been one of, one of the first I can remember it was Brian Halloween Doher around. Brian Doher yeah Brian both around the same kind of similar kind of era really so but like it was a real kind of tankless job of course Doer was able to arrow over those points off the right the right foot as well he was kind of able to do, able to do it all but Scully is a, is a lot of tankless work. A, a lot, a lot of tankless work. He could pick up the ball anywhere in the pitch, and you're right. He fits perfectly into a system, and they can play him anywhere there. He can play. He can play wing back. He can play half forward. He can play. He can play sweeper at times if they have to as well. But they're kind of two contrasting half forwards. Scully is uh, kind of a smaller kind of not not more dynamic, but he's definitely a smaller kind of player. Howard can dip into midfield. He could play centre back, he could play wing back, he could play centre forward because he's so rangy. Remember the catch last year, the the Brian Howard catch. Uh, McCaffrey's goal came off that, didn't it? Yeah. That was it was all from his catch just absolutely leaped up. I forget I forget who he dusted in the air. But like that's just it's it just shows you within a system two kind of they're not they're similar ish but they're also playing completely different roles within the Dublin system. Yeah, so you have the likes of Rory Dean who like barrel up through the centre and then you have someone like, let's say Ryan McInesby who mightn't always play wing forward but you can see him more of as a, as a, as a shooter, like he'll get some points. Then like Enda Smith, he might play midfield at times but he's just up and down the field, metronomic running with the ball, put you on the back foot, maybe a bit like Rory Dean albeit, they're, they're obviously slightly different. And the Smith has serious pedals, whereas it just seems like once Rory Dean gets ahead of steam up, it's just very hard to stop him because he's just so physically powerful. Then Ray Canellan, assuming he hits the ground running with Westmead whenever the season gets going, he's another dynamic runner. And that brings to mind Eamon Brannigan of Galway, who I think might have even started wing back. Maybe you were at one of their games this year and he might have been wing back. I think he's got great potential. Killian O'Sullivan of Westmead, I think, is worth mentioning. 
And how can Kelly we not? O'Sullivan, Kelly and O'Sullivan have mead before they take the head off you. Yeah, that definitely wouldn't go down well. But yeah, Kelly and O'Sullivan and mead. And then, of course, there's a couple of lads from Mayo you can't not uh, mention. Yeah, like to me, if Dermot O'Connor is fit, I probably have him number one if he's fit. Genuinely, I, I think I think he's class. I think he's class. I never forget that day, the Newbridge or Nowhere game. He was absolutely defiant that day. He obviously won young young footballer the year as well, but he's been riddled enough with injuries already. He's obviously given captain, took the captaincy off his brother Killian, and he just he was struggling last year. I think the All Ireland semi final last year was the first game he played in about two or three months. I think. Yeah, he broke his wrist. He actually got the captaincy taken off him for twenty twenty. That was given to Aidan O'Shea instead. But yeah, when he's on form, he's absolutely brilliant. Definitely, probably came back a bit too soon against Dublin last year. And I think if any team is going to expose the fact that you're not at hundred percent, it's them. And if you've had a broken wrist and you haven't, you probably haven't been able to run for a couple of weeks because you're letting it settle. Then you're doing sort of. I don't restricted training for a while and then you try and get ready to play Dublin at Croke Park when your team has played something like six times in seven weeks or something like that thankless task but he definitely has to be up there I don't know if I'd put him ahead of Howard like Stephen Campbell is another lad that I really like really good scorer said before looked like he could be a star after his 2014 season probably up and down a little bit in form but I think he's still potentially one of the very best out there again maybe doesn't always play wing forward but when I'm thinking about him I think him coming from deep and being able to get scores so this is probably the area I'd look at him in Are we saying Ryan McHugh is a wing back yeah? I think we have to yeah yeah, okay. No, that that's fair enough because he's obviously played half hour at different at different stages and is often on the end of moves, but he's probably starting a bit further a bit further back the pitch now as well. One lad I would like to mention, um, a lot of time it is kind of tankless work as well, is, is Ray McInesby from Monaghan. Like a lot of other other lads would get would get the lime like the Hugheses and, and Connor McManus and these guys and even like Carol O'Connell bomb and forward, but Ray McInesby does an unbelievable amount of work. I think I think I remember him kicking kick four points against Galway in a super Super 8's game in Salt Hill two years ago. He was man of the match. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, it's it's a tough role. Like it's funny. There's a certain shelf life with a half forward. If you look at someone like Paul Flynn uh, with Dublin, it was an All Star four years in a row. Absolutely unbelievable. But if you pick up an in, an injury, we'll say just like Dermot O'Connor, and you lose your mobility at all, it's almost like you can't play there anymore. Like if you if you're not mobile if you're not like I'd love to see the GPS on the the half hours like there's a lot of lads cover a lot of ground but these guys are up and down these boys are at the start of moves breaking down tackling getting hands in and they're at the end of moves as well or they're given the killer pass to finish off a move but once your body breaks down or you start picking up little injuries and you lose that little edge in terms of fitness or mobility you probably can't play half hour anymore and you probably need to maybe reinvent yourself somewhere else. Mm, a couple other guys to mention, Fergal Conway at Kildare, I think he's a very good player, Sean Gannon with Carlo, and we saw the run that he had with Aero last year, getting to the Leinster final against Ballyboden, which of course they coughed up late on. Peter Hart's an interesting one. You can see him playing inside and he did a nice bit this year so far. Um, what stood out was the game against Dublin in, in the horrendous conditions up in Oma. Do you see him as a wing forward? Because I, you know, the, the knock against him would be when he's tried to play out the field against the likes of Dublin and John Small has been able to shut him down. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, he's been shut down in a couple of big games when he was kind of needed, hasn't he? Um, he's kind of moved. He played wing back a good bit. He's been floating around. As you said, he played inside, inside as well. If it was to nail him down to a position, it probably would be probably left half forward. That's probably where you, you would see him most. But, like, I think what puts him out of the, you know, probably the top three, four conversation has been just the the performances in big games. Like invariably in those big games, particularly against the Dubs, like he's he's never really been more than a six out of ten in re- in recent years from my memory. He's been able to shut him down. John Small has been the one kind of dominating him rather than the other way around, and he cuts a frustrated figure. He's a brilliant, brilliant footballer though. Like if you, he's one of these footballers. You know to say if you give him space, he'll play. If you give him any space, he will he'll kill you. Like he'll kill you with his left foot because he's he's an absolutely sweet footballer. But just I I just think he's just off maybe a couple of other lads there in this kind of conversation. Could I make the case that, despite agreeing with you that maybe he isn't quite up there at the very, very top of this list in terms of best wing forward, that he's actually the most talented of the lot of these? Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't disagree with that. Wouldn't disagree with that. And as well, if you put him on the Dublin team, 
and other lads were getting more attention than he was getting and just say he was the the fourth like say we'll say the fourth best forward on the Dublin team and he was able to go and do his thing well then that that could be a different story altogether but he's the one he's one of, like apart from Cotton McShane Tyrone don't maybe have that marquee attacker so teams think okay we're going after McShane and we're going after Hart so he gets specialist attention and that's probably one of the reasons but as regards talent yeah you, you won't get much better that, that left, foot, left foot is absolutely sweet anywhere inside 45 yards and he'll invariably nail it yeah, Matthew Donnelly, Matthew Donnelly is another brilliant Tyrone forward, and we talked about him when we were discussing the best centre forwards. So it's that it's the moment of truth. Pick your best uh, wing forward. I think I'm going to go with Stephen O'Brien. Now we could make a fair case for those uh, Dubliners. I obviously started off waxing lyrical about Rory Dean, but I'm going to go with Stephen O'Brien again. This isn't necessarily about who's in the best team. It's about who's the best wing forward. And I can imagine him doing more damage in that Dublin team than other lads. I can imagine doing him more with the Mayo team. I can imagine doing him more than the Donegal wing forwards. So for me, it has to be Stephen O'Brien. So dynamic, has a point in him, has a goal in him, can shut people down. Yeah, it has to be him all day. Uh, Stephen O'Brien is a close second for me, but I I can't look beyond. Stephen O'Brien can play there and not too many other places. Brian Howard can play wing forward, centre forward, midfield, centre back. Um, like depending on, on fitness of other guys, his flexibility just w- wins out for me. Unbelievably athletic. athletic. Uh, like there's not too many. If you look at it, look at it this way, uh, would, would, would Cluxton, if Stephen O'Brien was playing with Dublin, would Cluxton be able to put a, a big long kick out down on top of him? I don't think he would. Do Kerry put big long kick outs down on top of him? No. But Dublin can do that with Howard because he's a mishmash almost of he's kind of a modern a modern half forward in, in recent years where he's a mixture of a midfielder and a half forward. He's got the mobility of a half forward, but the almost the area kind of prowess of a midfielder. And he can kick scores. And as you says, he has that little hop, skip, and a jump when he gets the ball in around the goals that he's going to be able to score and evade lads. So it's Brian Howard for me. But I don't think that, that that flexibility and versatility should actually affect the best wing forward conversation. I absolutely accept your point that he could play other positions in a way that Stephen O'Brien couldn't. But as a wing forward, someone who can cover the ground, someone who can put attacks on the back foot, someone who can score themselves both goals and points, I think for that reason it's Stephen O'Brien. Because brilliant and all as Howard is, I don't think he's got the wing forward qualities to the same level as uh, Stephen O'Brien. Okay, I, I disagree. I uh, I'm 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 making other points to show why why I've selected him. But if you want to put half forward against half forward, uh, Brian Howard would be would be edging it for me. Definitely would be edging it for me. All right. Well, people, get your opinions in. If you do agree with us or otherwise, let us know.